Okay, thank you, Spencer. Um, so next we will have Max. Great. Um, and we'll just dive straight in. And then we'll talk about all of All right, okay. I just put my first image here. I'm not going to use the. Oh, that's. How did you get it? <laughs> okay, so Max will talk about the aesthetics of martial arts. So, hello everyone. Uh, I've got the top written text, but I try to do it in a nice way. <laughs> talk a bit like a shrink, so I'm going to fall into you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the image is from uh, Get All Tourist, the uh, 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 kind of website on Park Color by Apple, which is my main hobby. But I'll, I'll just leave it here and I'm not going to use the images because the slides were made because I wasn't sure how, uh, how global people were here, how much you knew about different martial arts, and actually people seem to know a lot about global martial arts and not just karate and the Japanese ones, so I don't actually need those images, you know, you know pretty much. So, aesthetics of martial arts, a sub-disciplinary proposal. Paul Bowman, Paul, has initiated the idea that to understand martial arts and to make their study more useful to the academy, we need to invent and institutionalize more martial arts studies. Like the martial arts themselves were found and institutionalized just a couple of decades ago. While we always knew that there have been Roman gladiators, half acting, half fighting for their lives, and boxing and wrestling have been major sports and forms of entertainment, not forgetting here how show wrestling and art were not just the wrestlers act, but also the audience performs. What is here meant with martial arts and my aesthetic interest in them is something that arises from the victorious globalization of, first of all, Japanese martial arts, like judo and karate, which then conceptually started to include all forms of martial arts from all over the world, also inviting people to find and support their local traditions and to teach them more openly. The concept might flex and stretch, but martial arts seem to be needed as a word to make sense of a modern phenomenon, partly built through popular culture images, again I'm referring to Paul's work, there are schools, journals, magazines, sites, films, networks, also research networks, and experts practicing, studying, discussing, and theorizing martial arts. I'd like to stress that the network, institution, culture, and concept of martial arts is wide and includes many sub-branches. One of them is, of course, sport historically conceptually led by Olympic Judo and Taekwondo. Another is the history, heritage, and anthropology-driven way of studying martial arts. We all know the people who go to the weirdest historical forums, or the nearly dying versions of martial arts. We say there's a spiritual margin too, ranging from the Sufi who trains Silak to the most cheap, stressing forms of Kung Fu. I refer to, for example, the Esparra's work. But this part of the martial arts world might institutionally lean more towards the world of religion and New Age, um, then form its own strong uh, framework inside of the world of martial arts. This will be my guess, but please correct me if I'm wrong. There are regions in the martial arts where the focus is on health. There are networks of people who are into weapons and all sorts, and who also go shooting. My interest is aesthetics, and martial arts as aesthetic culture, like that. Of course, also sport has its own aesthetics, and this is a part of my work also. So aesthetics of sport on a metal level shares a lot with all the sports, from rhythm and dynamics of attacking to defending. But of course, many martial arts also have their very own peculiar logics, which often can be studied, uh, and they echo the rules. It's profitable to high, kick high, then you kick high. But it's interesting that a big part of martial arts, in fact, really, really, really stress aesthetics. And then we really don't so far have any holistic work done on that. Aesthetics as a philosophical discipline could, so, be a profitable companion discipline for martial arts studies for a variety of reasons. Kalari Payatto became, especially in the north of Kerala, mainly performative and more dance-like after India gained its independence. Modern Wushu has turned Kung Fu into a mix of gymnastics and dance-like expression. Silat has, through its national role in Malaysia and Indonesia, become something which is performed in festivals, for example, weddings, and of course, already the Shaolin monks performed the most attractive techniques in festivals since the 17th century. Likewise, the practitioners of the antique pancreatium. Some criticized jujutsu for becoming aestheticized, probably already during the Tokawa era, when there was not much martial use of the techniques. 
still the 20th century has witnessed something I'd call the aesthetic turn of martial arts. And a part of that is the whole design of outfits, colored belts, modern rituals, which were brought to the world of martial arts by Jigoro Kano, whose work affected first mainly Japanese and Korean martial arts, but then also Chinese ones, and for example, the Indian ones too, as it suddenly felt right to unify clothing and possible match rules. And while old katas, trends, and payatus have been affected and tested in real combat, there are many modern and contemporary forms in martial arts, uh, which look more like choreographic thinking, atmospherically Latin main aesthetic. Tai made karate an art openly, and modern Western concepts of beauty are often referred to it in the practice and teaching. One cannot neither forget all the modern forms of stage combat from Gabriele Gorilla's system, which combines Shaolin Kung Fu and Ninjutsu in an easy to use fashion for actors, to the way Kung Fu films gave a new taste to old techniques. A bit like rap music had been given a new life to dusty soul pits. Since the invention of the concept of art and building its institutional framework, this starts seriously in the 18th century and the system was pretty much ready in the 1830s. Aesthetics has had an important role in our understanding of the arts. It has been a companion discipline, commented on by artists and critics alike, without forgetting scholars from other disciplines. Asking questions like what is art, theorizing aesthetic experience, interpretation, aesthetic value, institutional matters, aesthetics took even part in building the art system. The idea that literature, painting, dance, music, sculpture, and architecture belonged together was fresh in the 18th century, and so was the idea of genius, without forgetting ideas like art should be free. And all these turns in the development of art were accompanied by philosophical debates. I'd like to add to Bauman's idea for the need of stronger, more disciplinary martial studies that it would be important to initiate also a sub-branch of aesthetics of martial arts to really understand what martial arts are. With all the examples mentioned, it should be clear that becoming an aesthetic culture has been important for martial arts, maybe even to the same extent as becoming a sport. I claim that aesthetics is really in the DNA or how we conceive martial arts, leading on the everyday aesthetics of rituals which have increased, not decreased, Although we easily think that modernization would take us away from the heritage of martial arts, it's all the opposite. We often come up with our ideas about martial arts by passionately, sometimes obsessively building up an aesthetically Latin experience of heritage, a beautified sense of the past. Whether that past is true or maybe not, maybe just a product of nationalist imagination. What could the sub discipline include? I have a couple of perspectives that I like to sub. One, many martial arts have turned into arts and aesthetic culture, mostly dance, through the need to hide them from political reasons, occupation and colonialism, or through the centrality of dance in the cultural context where they were developed or modernized. Or the Plato writes about Purhikia, Greek military dance, and for example, Ungala, kicking and stomping and capoeira are good examples of this. Of course, the transatlantic slave trade being a lot about actually taking martial dances from Africa to the Americas, where they mixed in new ways. Okinawa has its minor te dance. Becoming dance is a strong historical phenomenon in martial arts. It never happens the other way. Dance does not turn into martial art. Also, martial arts are often used in a dance-like fashion. For example, the way Silat or Kalori Payatu is today often performed in weddings and other festivals. We need to map out how the aesthetization of martial arts happen and what glues together the martial arts, which focus on aesthetics and the aesthetic use of techniques. And one can add, of course, there have been many works in contemporary dance which have featured martial art techniques. Most famous examples being the work of the Hong Kong Dance Company and see the lot of this collaboration with the Shaolin monks. What to make up out of it? Two. The only martial art that has been really thought for a moment to belong to the institutional art system is sumo wrestling in the late 19th century, when the idea of art was imported to Japan. This ended fast, by the way. But practices which today recognize as arts, for example, painting, poetry, and calligraphy, were also part of the education of the military elite in East Asia, most famously the education and lifestyle of the samurai in the era of peace before modernization. The analogy between, for example, poetry and sword use was deep already in Yamato Musashi's writings 
But the way these came together in the practice and called with the samurai later on offers an interesting cluster case where martial arts and things we see as art from the modern point of view collide and come together. One must also remember that the Japanese art system, if it is correct to call it that way, had famously, on here following the work of Akira Makasaki, been divided into playful arts from theater to music. And then the serious, contemplative, meditative network of practices, from stone gardens to poetry and the use of the sword. So they were in the same institution, actually. Here, martial arts were loosely together with practices which they think of as art. And that was sometimes the case also in the classical Chinese Keiju education system, where poetry writing went side by side with archery. And one must not forget that the ninja was in the end an actor. Reading the 17th century ninja scrolls of Hattori Hanzo, one finds surprisingly much advice for acting. And one of the fake professions that the ninja could take up was even traveling flute player, which required a lot of artistic capacity. One could fake to be a traveling flute player, but not without learning to play well the flute. Three. Martial arts are aesthetically pleasing to look at, at least often. Maybe not much judo matches or all forms of peasant wrestling for most of us. But for example, karate katas and aikido throws, definitely nearly for all. What are the dynamics of this? For example, what to say about people doing techniques together? Could it resemble tango more than the aesthetic logic of sport? I'm here thinking about Falk Heinrich's late work in the summer aesthetics of tango. Two individuals or more together do choreography engage with each other to make things look smooth and effective. And it's even effective an aesthetic attribute which people aim for. Anyway, beauty is mentioned often by teachers in martial arts. Like we discussed yesterday in the pub, thank you Dina, Jakob and uh, Griff, many teachers say that when it looks good, it's good. This is a complicated issue though. <laughs> Four, the fourth perspective is that Soma is steadily moving in martial arts and feeling this movement is a sort of aesthetic pleasure which stems from many backgrounds, for example, heritage thinking. 6 a.m. in the morning, when I breathe loudly in a deep posture of Galeri Payattu, I sometimes realize that I'm doing the same as the half-yogic warriors of the Kerala kingdoms who prepared for war 900 years ago. I feel like a living ruin, and I can imagine how I look, sometimes even in the mirror. <coughs> and I experience that I'm producing beauty on many levels, also just for myself, also also go to the past <coughs> teachers and practitioners which connects me immensely to history, like I enter a museum when I practice it. Many martial arts are really old, and one feels like living embodiment of cultural history when one trains them. Also the stress on harmony, purification of spirit, and other existential and breath-driven practices aim for inner stillness and harmony, a sort of mind-body minimalist aesthetics. <coughs> we embody beauty, having and seeing ourselves and others executed techniques, and there are of course differences. The minority of us probably sees beauty in grappling, but sees it rather in kicks, low stances, and throws, like said. Which can invite us to think of a taxonomy of beauty in the wide uh, array of techniques employed in martial arts. Strangling someone and doing a jump side kick in Taekwondo are extreme ends of aesthetics. Anyway, some aesthetics as a platform for discussing the body aesthetic, inner and outer, I think is a must for martial arts studies. The fifth perspective is the cultural aestheticization of martial arts, including stage fighting and the use of martial arts in theater and dance. Again, Galeri Bayat was an integral part of Kapak dance and Indian theater. <coughs> also European avant-garde since Eugenio Barba's Del Mundo. And historical fencing is taught in European theater schools. But even more, Kung Fu movies, karate movies, all sorts of martial art movies, from lately popular still art films to boxing films, have changed our perception of the martial arts. Bringing in choreographic thinking, stressing some moves over others for visual pressure, and creating a whole cinematic language with hidden trampolines and virtually impossible kicks designed for film only. The film works often like footing for us in the Goffmanian sense. We learn ways of being martial artists step by step by watching, like we watch our teachers, although sometimes it for sure happens through camp attitude. Who in Kung Fu would not have at least once tried to kick like Bruce Lee? And who would not have at least once thought that it's a bit ridiculous? Six, of course, also theories written by philosophers could support this whole. Exegesis and commentaries could enrich our thinking. Martin Minnerick and Dean Diapai, Eric Fischer, lift us thinking about performativity to martial arts. But one could also discuss Heidegger's discourse on the tool and think of the stick to become the stick, as they say. 
or Joey's theory of embodied aesthetic experience, developed to a sport direction by Joseph Cooper. And one should not forget that theory of poetry was a bit connected to martial arts in historical Japan, and that Kalari Payato has been performed a lot in the framework of Rasa theory, which has dominated theater uh, and many other arts today film, since the writings of Bharata and Abhinavagupta on the Indian subcontinent. So aesthetics has been engaged with martial arts for long, often marginally, but here and there. We need to map out where philosophical classics go to be helpful for our understanding of martial arts. In the end, this needs to be also a sub-branch of aesthetics, a hybrid. Together with the aesthetics of sport, everyday aesthetics, that's a bit discussion now, and aesthetics of popular culture, mashing up with them, but partly on its own, the aesthetics of martial arts could in the long run give valuable information and advice on how to go forward with the aesthetic development that we witness. Not forgetting the traditions that have aimed for the aesthetic or produce it by chance historically. One concept that I like to find and create, maybe together with you, would concern the aesthetic territory of martial arts. How to call Kalari, Taido, Wushu, and the aesthetic margins of other martial arts? It's not that these would even aesthetically be more important than the sports side, which has its own value, but it could help us to grab the problem. Finally, the word art is already there in the concept of martial arts. But on the other hand, the concept of art has seen the art scene become a problem, not just class-wise, gender-wise, and for post-colonial reasons. It really is an exclusive product of the wide 18th century continental upper-class male and his restricted worldview. As other cultural systems, like the Japanese Gator or the Zen-based network already mentioned, or the Indian Kala uh, with the 64 uh, different uh, arts, their richer and more martial arts-related classifications more open attitudes, would have hosted better than martial arts, and even did a bit. But let me try to come up with a proposal for a word that would fit the aesthetic culture of the martial arts. How about aesthetic martialities, or the bellicose arts? Could we use the word artful competence? The quest is on, but the work is important. Coming up with a concept and institution for art, art also became an object of research. It took a century after the concept of Boas Artes was coined by Francesco da Hollanda, but only two decades after uh, Baumgarten's Aesthetica, 1750, to appoint the first professors of art research in European universities. This is something for us to think about, together with uh, Spencer Bennington. We need to hurry up to support and develop martial arts studies, also aesthetically. Aesthetics is a classical discipline, but martial arts fit in neatly and could be thought easily without a problem, as right now, everyday aesthetics and aesthetics of popular culture are actually red hot. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you.